that speed in winning the 400 IM at this meet. Take your mark. Good field, Jason. A really good field. A lot of great credentials here. You've got Olympians, obviously, including the Olympic champion. The gold and bronze medalists from the Tokyo Games with the top two there in lanes four and five. Hafnawi and Smith. we got Killer, who might be the best 200 freestyler the United States has right now. Bobby Fink, obviously, you know his credentials. Double Olympic gold in Tokyo. I, I, I like this field. I, I, I like the way Hafnawi is swimming right now just because of, of what I saw in the 800 earlier in the meet when he looked so good in that and winning that 800. Trenton Julian down in lane number eight. Bottom of the picture right now. Charging his way to the forefront. And has the top spot here by over a second and a half. Aaron Smith in the runner-up spot and Drew Kibler there in third. You look at this event from the United States perspective, it might be one of the weaker events that is on the program right now anyway for the Americans. No Americans ranked in the top 10 in the world last year. Only one, Kieran Smith, ranked in the top 10 in 2021. And I don't necessarily think it's, weak is a bad word. You know, it's not, it's not the right word. It's just that the rest of the world is so good in this event. They have elevated this event tremendously over the last year, especially. You take 2022 for example, you had two guys that broke 342. The Olympic gold medalist, Hafnali, went 343 in 2021, just a year before. And for him, time off last summer, not swimming any big competitions and trying to return to form and back up Rowdy coming literally shot from a cannon out of nowhere in that outside lane in Tokyo to stun everyone and take that win. Might be the most stunning victory of any race in Tokyo I saw, especially going in. I didn't even know who he was. I had never heard of him, to tell you the truth. I should know my swimming. I had never heard of Hafnawi going into that meet. Now I did after prelims, obviously, but I didn't think from an outside lane that he would be able to win gold, and he did shock the world in winning that race. Well, the winner and the man that finished third at those games right now in a duel right now, Kieran Smith and Hafnawi battling right now. Hafnawi has the edge, Kieran Smith in lane five. Coming strong. Now this is where Hafnawi Again, kind of came out of nowhere in the 400. Bobby Fink did it in the 800 and 1500. By the way, Fink is running in third right now, right underneath Smith, his teammate at Florida. So they're used to each other doing this day to day. But there's half now. You see, see that the catch he has out front? He's got that great catch. He's still grabbing that water, but he's not spinning his wheel and really stretching that lead out from what was pretty much nothing at the 300 to all two seconds at the 350. Wow. Superb effort here from the Olympic gold medalist and leaving Kieran Smith and everybody else in his wake now, working his way towards the wall as he pulls away here for a strong showcase in the men's 400 free. Hafnawi takes the win. 347.41 and victory by over three second seconds against Smith and Bobby Fink there in third Zane Grothy fourth and the Olympic champ from Tokyo <laughs> collecting himself right now with that swim here in early January. You know we haven't talked much about the clock it's not an especially fast time it's about four seconds slower than he, than he went in Tokyo but really solid for this early in the season. If you take last year, for example, it still would have been three seconds outside of top 10 rank time for Hafnawi. That was the 300 mark right there. And, you know, Smith was right there. 350 point for him. January, good swim, solid swim for him. Fink right there had a nice 352 plus. But this was all about the Olympic champion. And, and doing it really the last 100. He was just kind of 
biting 